we got to grow up. We can't keep being babies and crying around here like this and crying about that. My God, if you knew what dynamite that God has given to you, you'd use it. Hallelujah. I tell you, when I got through it's a four o'clock in the morning, I was up all day long. I had so much power. I felt so good. I could run through a troop and jump over the wall. Hallelujah. I feel like David. I feel like David. Glory to God. I couldn't hardly stop saying, praise the Lord. I, Bobby got up and I was up just rejoicing in the Lord. And I said, come on, boy. That, that, that knee is still bothering you. It shouldn't be bothering you. Hallelujah. You need to get up and say, glory to God. This is the day. Hallelujah. And I'm taking my things that come in your, life, in your life. Don't do that. Write in. You know the scriptures that you're learning here? It's, that's not to just be able to get a, a, a sticker. I mean, a, <laughs> you know, it's for you to use. It's for you to use for your life. It works. You know what? God saved me 1955. That little boy there of mine was like five months old. And I tell you, I'm not tired yet. Hallelujah. Soon we'll be 77 years old, and I tell you, I feel better than I've ever felt in my life. Hallelujah. He promised to renew my strength. He promised to renew me like an eagle. You know how you pick all the eagles, fellas off, and come back? Woo! Stronger than ever. Pastor, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now you were you were discipleship. How long ago? Thanks, Justin. 2007. Did you got a sticker? Yes. So she graduated with honors. Let's give the Lord a praise offering. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You just started to catch God is real. Yes, he is. He's not dead. And he's alive. And he's working in us to accomplish what he wants to accomplish. Amen. In spite of us. In spite of us. You know, that's, that's so. Hallelujah. I thank God for God just simply being God. Don't you really? Because, you know, we all fall short. There's no question about it. In fact, the more you get into this thing, the more you realize that there's nothing we can really truly do of ourselves except trust Him and allow Him to do what's necessary. Amen? Okay, if you got your Bibles, everybody got their Bible? Hold your Bible up. You got a Bible. Sean, where's your Bible? Hold it up. Hold it up. Second Corinthians. 
10-3. I got a whole bunch of notes here, and I got a whole bunch of different ways to go. But I just want to see what God wants to do. Because that's the only thing that really makes sense. In fact, I think everything we've been kind of talking about just kind of fits. 2 Corinthians 10, 10 3. You know, yesterday morning, we had our soul winning here. And we just kind of shared from our heart, you know, we just got to go out and do it. And Pastor Gray preached last night exactly, just about word for word, or thought for thought, what God put on our heart in the morning. Let me tell you something, that's how you know that this is God. When Betty got up here today, and what she shared, that's exactly what the Lord's put on my heart. When we opened the, the service today, just trying to get out of the way of us to God, that's exactly what we're talking about, what we're talking about right now. And see, God's Word goes forth to accomplish what He wants to accomplish. And that's to build us, to build His church. In fact, my job as a pastor is found in Ephesians. 411. And he himself, talking about Jesus, gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints. What's it mean to equip the saints? That means get them ready. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come to the unity of of the faith, of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to a measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of man and by the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things unto him who is the head of Christ. And God's working in us to de deliver us, to accomplish that in our lives. To get us where He wants us to be is in Him. Assimilate, evidently. That's a fancy word, whatever that means. No, that means for us to be exactly like Him. How many ever assimilated? <laughs> that assimilated? In other words, when you assimilate, you're getting all jacked up. You're getting high, aren't you? Buzzed out. Wow. Where that stuff was created to do. When we're assimilated into God, the joy, the peace, the glory, and all that that God is, He's working in us, drawing us to be just like that. Just like Him. You catch what I'm saying? And see, we, I guess I don't know how we do this. we got to shake ourselves loose or do something to allow him to have his way so we can accomplish that. I can imagine ever being, every beating in heaven just shaking their heads and those dummies, can't they see? God made them in his image. He made them for purpose. He wants them to have life, joy, peace, victory. He wants them to be just like him. Why don't they pay attention? Why don't they listen? What are they listening to? I saw a bunch of in jail the other day that did that. I'm understanding. I'm understanding. Glory, to God. Glory to God. You know what? You get to doing this too. There's a good chance you might end up in jail. And that's, but you know, we say, well, that, that's not, that's, I mean, God doesn't want us to do that. But that's no fun. How come he doesn't want us to have fun? How many of you can honestly say that sin has been fun over a long period of time? Nope. How many of you can say it's destroyed me? Amen. And God is so gracious through all that to say, wait a minute now. Listen to me. Yes. And all heaven is say, why don't you listen to me? Amen. 
and see what the plan he has for you. I mean, what a joy, what a peace. Yeah, there's struggles and battles, but God said, look, you go take the land. I'm gonna, we're involved in a fight. Yes, we are. Well, I don't want to fight. Well, you ain't got a choice. Right. Yeah, you do. You can lay down and quit and let the enemy just save you. Just totally and completely annihilates you, destroy you, because the Bible said he's a thief. He comes, but the kill, steal, and destroy. Amen. But God said, listen, I've come to give you life. Come on. Radiant life. Yeah. Radiant health. Abundant life. Victory. Joy. On and on and on. Yes. The thief comes, but the kill, steal, I've come to give you life and give you life more abundantly. Oh, and I'll tell you something, the abundant life God has for us, you can't even contain it. Amen. I mean, if you got to wait till you're in your 70s, Betty. I'm a few years behind, but I'm in my 70s. And let me tell you, you can't quench it. You don't want to quench it. And you ain't afraid of living life anymore. Because God is showing you. He's making himself real. And I'll tell you what, I'm not going back to where I came from. What a dumb thing to do. He who loves correction loves knowledge. He who loves instruction loves knowledge. He who, has, he who hates correction is stupid. So where's that at? It's in the Bible. Right in the Bible, is it? Proverbs 12, 1. How many ever? Well, I can look in the mirror. And I can see some wrinkles and all that kind of stuff. That's why. It scares me half to death. I'm an old man because I look in there and say, oh, wait a minute, that's the outside. <laughs> What's on the inside? Amen. Something that you can't even contain. It just bubbles over. Amen. <clears throat> no, Betty's not blowing smoke. She gets up there. That's real. Amen. That's not being blackified. That's being godified. Amen. You know, the black church is known for their emotion. And I went, I went one, to one not too long ago, and I preached there. They, they got me blackified. Either that or I got them whiteified. No, we're getting godified. How many want to get godified? I mean, you're tired of being hurt miserably. All right, so God's got you in the fight. And we can't help it. He made it that way. Amen. Now, this is old King James. We can go to other translations if you want to. But this is the way I learned it. I memorized it. And though we walk in 2 Corinthians 10.3, everybody got it? Yes. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Though we walk in the flesh, you know, okay. Let's just go to the New Living Translation. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. see what that says. We are human, but we don't wage war with human plans and methods. We use God's mighty weapons, not mere worldly weapons, to knock down the devil's stronghold. With these weapons, we can break down every proud argument that keeps people from knowing God. With these weapons, we can conquer their rebellious ideas, and we teach them to obey Christ, and we will punish those Remain disobedient after the rest of you have become loyal and obedient. You know, we live in the flesh trying to get victory. We're living in the flesh in this material world. But our warfare isn't of this world. Our world our war is in the spiritual realm and our weapons are mighty spiritual weapons. Come on. Our problem is that we keep on getting tangled up in the battles of the flesh. Yes. Yes. And when we get in the flesh, we are defeated. Right. If we get in the flesh, Satan has the advantage over us. If we remain in the spirit, the advantage is ours. 
And we can't lose. You get that? I'm telling you. We're indestructible if we wear the whole armor of God. I mean, today we pay billions of dollars to watch people play sports. The Diamondbacks tore up last night. I mean, they tore up big time. 14 and 2 or 3 or 5, I don't know what it was, something like 14 or 4 or something. I mean, they really tore up. I had to read the paper just to find out how they do. How they did. Amen? But I read the Bible to find out how I'm going to do. And every day I read the Bible, it says you win. But if I don't read the Bible, I forget. Who won? But when I read the Bible, it tells me. Though you walk in the flesh, you're not warring after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty. Mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. Casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalts itself against the Lord God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Man, I said, how can you bring every thought into the obedience of Christ? You can't. But God can let me tell you something the more you submit to God the simpler this gets and the more you realize it's God doing it man every temptation that comes into my mind about alcohol just passes right through oh I hate it and thank God you know what I once loved it and man that was a stronghold you know what you open yourself up Satan builds strongholds in your mind. And strongholds are something that you cannot tear down by yourself. I mean, I'm talking about. I mean, there's something, whether it's anger, whether it's rage, whether it's drugs, sex, whatever it is. It's got a hold of us. How many I'm talking about? Every one of us. Still got some of those things working against us. And if you focus in on them, they're going to bring you down. But if you realize what God has done for you, pulling down these strongholds. And by the way, listen to me. I mean, he's really had some strongholds. I mean to tell you, they were something totally and completely devastated you. You've tried and tried and tried. It's, it, they have such a hold on you. Amen. Little by little. Little by little. God gives you the power to pull down those struggles. He does it. Amen. You know, when I first got saved, I got saved under a pastor. He said, you were in the cult very deeply, weren't you? In witchcraft. I opened my heart and I let that every demonic thing come into my life. Willingly. It's like this, oh, this, is, this, uh, this is the picture, word picture. The elevator was coming down. And it was going to open. And my spiritual guides... We're in that elevator. When the door opens, it's like my heart's opening. I'm going to allow them to come into my life. Totally and completely demonic. They were the ugliest, ungodliest looking creatures. Mm -hmm. And I opened my heart and my mind to let them come in. Yeah. And my wife said, I wasn't smoking nothing either. <laughs> I'll tell you what I was doing. I was leaning, I was fighting. This warfare under the flesh, thinking, I know how to do this. I'm smarter than everybody else. Man, I'll spend hours and hours meditating, opening myself up to the cosmic consciousness. And all it was is the devil. And you know what they were? They were Indians. Like the old witch doctors. Maybe that's why God's put it in such my heart today to be able to go down to the reservations. And when my, I told my pastor, he says, you were into all this. In fact, you've heard me say this many times. I went to fortune teller, and the fortune teller says, divorce your wife. Yeah. I did. Wow. God told me a few years later when I asked him, go back and marry her again, and I did. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hear what I'm saying. Thank you, Lord. And God set me free from that just like that. Hallelujah. And my pastor at that time, he said, how did, how could you ever get so involved in demonic activity and, and be free? I said, I don't understand it. I said, no, I said, I don't either, but I'll tell you something, I don't want none of that stuff anymore. <laughs> All that did was darkness. It brought terror. 
Can you imagine listening to the, somebody that says, divorce your wife? But I loved her. I was mixed up. You know, I'm thinking, well, maybe there's something better. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what happened. When I got saved, and I said, God, I can't even pick a wife. He said, I know, dummy. If you listen to me this time, I'll give you back the same one. Oh. That's the truth. How many of us we let God pull down those strongholds in our lives that have been built year after year? You know, I was thinking about the Native Americans. I was thinking about the occult. This is something that's been going on for centuries and centuries. It's ingrained. It may be Family traditions have been handed down to you. For an example, I'm Scotch-Irish. They like to drink. There's a propensity in them. Once you taste and see. <laughs> By the way, that's demonic too. A lot of the Native Americans are like that. I'm a Christian now. I guess I still got some Scotch and Irish in me. Some of the good stuff, I can, I still can make money go a long way. Don't waste it. That's the good thing. But I'm no drunk anymore. I'll tell you what, I still got, I don't have that fire or temp temper. I never did have that. But almost. You know what? I didn't think about this until just now. My dad. He was ornery. Loved a man. He, he, he did the very best he could. He, yeah. he never really accepted the Lord. But yeah, in his heart, he says, nobody's going to tell me what to do. He was extremely young, extremely talented, athletic. He was a, he was a professional boxer. I mean, he was good. He could do anything. And he tried as best he could with his family. But you know what would happen to him? And when, he was in, when he boxed in the ring, he was okay. But somebody would get up and get in his face and he'd lose it. When he lost it, it means he lost consciousness. And he ripped somebody apart, not knowing what he did. I mean, how many's ever been there? How many's ever done something like that on a binge? On a blackout? That's what happened. That's demonic! And many of us have got problems like the hundred I'm talking about. And that's what God said, mighty through God to the pulling down of these strongholds. God does it. It doesn't matter how bad it is. There's nothing stronger than God. So when you start yielding to Him and let Him do what's necessary, He will work in you to do His will as a pleasure, helping you get past that. Amen. And the more you yield to Him, it just seems to fade away. It doesn't have the power it once had over you anymore. Amen. You know what Jesus said? Jesus, I can John... 5.30 I am my own self can do nothing. Jesus said this. But as I hear, I judge. My judgment is just because I seek not my will, but the Father would set me. Now Jesus was God. And he's even saying, apart from God, I can't do anything of myself. Now some people that are Bible scholars are going to tell me I'm out to lunch or whatever. But that's what the Bible says. And what I understand him to say was, I have to wait to hear from God. Hallelujah. The Father. Before I do anything. I can't do it in myself. Now if he says he couldn't do it himself, what on earth do we think we can do? Catch this. We can't do nothing of ourselves. I won't self can do nothing. That's what he said. I can't do nothing. Jesus said that. But when he hears from the Father, and the Father tells him what to do, the Father does it all, and all He does, and has done, is yield to the Father. Father, take this away from me. When He was in Gethsemane. But He said, not thy will, not my will, but thy will be done. And it was a joy that was set before Him that He was able to endure all that. Yes, amen. I got to quit. I, I didn't get started when I was going to have that down. I don't care. This way, I, this, I love this. I, lo I like to just let God be God. Don't you? Yeah. Just let it go. If you get right with God, you see God. I'm not saying you're perfect. But I'll tell you something. That Holy Ghost will get inside you. Using you 
to minister to people what people need. And I see people in here growing their feet up. Devastating. You can't, you can't look yourself in, in the mirror. You can't look yourself in the eye. And you, every time you look at other people, think, why don't you turn your head? You're made right with God. Amen. Come on. You ain't junk. The devil's told you all this. Yes, he's had all your life to beat you up. You turn to God and quit. Yeah. You turn to God. That's why right, you'll never know what I almost said. Let me tell you something. You turn to God. He'll start working it if you mean it. And you ain't going to go back out there on the streets and be drug addicts. Amen. You're going to have the joy of the Lord as your strength. Yes. It doesn't matter what you've done in the past. God says, forget the past. Yeah. I don't remember anymore. Why do you remember? Just turn to me. Let me be God. Let me show you what I can do and I want to do in your life. Yeah. I didn't make no jokes. You know, if you think you beat yourself up, you, you, you're full of unbelief. That's, right. That's the greater sin. Not because you messed up so bad that you hurt your ego or whatever. No. Your sin is unbelief. Not trust in God. Amen. <coughs> My wife's a teacher says, well, that's quite a stronghold, isn't it? Yeah. In imagination. That's right. That God's going to pull those down. Hallelujah. The strongholds in imagination. Hallelujah. Every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, he will pull down. Yeah. How many are ready to start listening, pay attention? And let God be God so he can do what he wants to do. Now, if you're still stuck on stupid, because that's what the Bible says, you go right ahead and be stupid. Well, they've done that, and that's fine. And I'll, here's what I pray. Be as stupid as you can be then. Go out there and do all the stupidest things as hard as you can do. As hard as you can be stupid. I'll tell you what will happen. It will work. And then when you try it with all your heart, because when you hold back a little bit, well, I'll tiptoe through the two leaves. No. You just keep bouncing back and forth. If you decide to be as stupid as you can possibly be, you go out there and say, this stupid stuff don't work. That's why they call it stupid. Amen. Come on. And then, you, then when you turn to God with everything you got, oh, yeah. you ain't going back now and then God say, listen, Hallelujah. I got full reign now. Yeah. I can accomplish now what I want to accomplish. I'm going to pull down strongholds. I'm going to cast it down imagination. I'm going to show them who I am. For greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. Amen. Yeah. You can go on over and over, scripture after scripture. I got a whole bunch of them here. One last one. I say then, walk in the Spirit. And you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, the Spirit against the flesh. They are contrary one to the other, so you not do the things which you would. But if you be led by the Spirit, you're no longer under the law. You're not controlled by that old sin nature anymore. Let's give the Lord a good praise. All right. Yeah. Your heads quickly. There's no question 